Okay, guys, look. I know this looks really nice, but you know what else looks really nice? This. Hey guys, welcome back to a new video, and yes, that is me, that is my character, that is merch. She said, new year, new me, and opened up a social media account and decided that she identifies as a male now. A fucking jacked male. So yes, I did end up changing my character, but why, you might ask? Literally only because of this chest piece. Look at how fucking amazing it makes you look. The female one gives you cleavage, but like... Eh, I would have preferred a much better looking tummy for the females, but it's whatever, honestly. And the male layered armors look absolutely amazing. I hate how Safi looks on male, though. It's absolutely disgusting, but most of the things are actually pretty okay. But is this chess piece even worth running? Is this chess piece changing your entire character, changing your life, changing your sex, changing your gender, whatever the hell it is that you people consider it nowadays? Yes. It is actually pretty meta, and I'm going to share some builds with you guys here today. Now, if you aren't using a Safi weapon, what are you doing? But if you are using a Safi weapon, and you have Teostra Technique on a Longsword, Sword and Shield, Hunting Horn, or Insect Glaive, you're going to be running the same old Master's Touch build, but now you can sub in this chest piece in place of the Brute Tigrix chest piece, and still run a standard setup with all the skills that you need. Max attack boost, 100% crit with crit i6, if your weapon has at least 5% affinity, which is all Safi weapons. Max agitator, crit boost, weakness exploit, and peak performance, which is actually more damage than previous sets, because before you could only get Agitator 4 on most builds. And with this chest, you also get that bonus level of Fortify, which is super useful for Guiding Lands, and you can slot in Max Health Boost via Combination Decos, and you have this little 4 slot in the Helm that you can slot whatever you want in it. I went with Coalescence, but you can opt for Handicraft or Resentment or whatever you want. If you need Crit I7 for whatever reason, you can also slot in a Vitality Deco in one of the level 1 slots in the chest, and then just slot in an Expert plus 4 jewel here instead. And that way you have Max Attack Boost, Crit I, and health boost. If you're running hammer or you don't have TO technique, you can still run the same set, but you'll need to use the Teostra helmet, which looks hot as fuck by the way, anime as hell, but it will make you lose a level of attack boost, but you'll have a spare deco combo, so you can have a level of divine blessing, or recovery up, or whatever else that you like. For greatsword, you can run the exact same build, but using the focus charm instead of the attack charm, so you actually get away with focus 3 in this set, which is something that you usually don't on any other endgame greatsword set in Iceborne. This is slightly less optimal than a traditional set using the Damascus chess piece, but this is the best you can get if you want to play greatsword looking like a Greek god, which is worth it in my opinion. Everyone knows that fashion is greater than damage. For ZSD spam switch hangs, you can pretty much use the same set we were using before and still get everything you need, 100% crit, max agitator, peak, crit boost, wax, power prolonger, and that one level of earplugs. Comparing this to the old set, you lose one level of attack boost and recovery up, which in all honesty is actually not that bad, because you gain a level of fortify and agitator in their place, so it's actually one more raw than you had previously. For other weapons like lance, you can also make it work, but I found it hard to optimize without running TO technique on the weapon, and I simply just haven't played the weapon enough and done enough testing to give you guys a confident answer. It's just simply not my style, even though I think it's pretty cool. Well, that about wraps it up, guys. Sorry for the absence these past few weeks. Life happens. And I posted in my community tab that I'd be doing a Q&A in this video, but I didn't really get that many replies or varied replies. Kind of got more or less the same questions over and over. So I'll save those for another video, maybe. And I'll combine those with any questions you guys drop in the comment sections of this video. So leave me any questions you guys might have. It can be about anything. It doesn't have to be about Monster Hunter. Just, yeah, leave them in the comments. And I'll probably do a video or something like that later on. And that about wraps up this video. I would like to thank my patrons for their continued support. A link to my Patreon and my Discord is in the description, as always, so click it and come join me on Discord. I'll be back in a few days with some basic MR builds for all the PC players that are finally with us in Iceborne, and as for 2020, expect more non-Monster Hunter related content on the channel. Anyway, thank you all for watching, and I'll see you all in the next one.